Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out the last episode. If you're one of those people, I hope you enjoyed the conversation and thanks so much for coming back. But for everyone out there who's new to the show, welcome. Feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer, soda, water, coffee in the fridge. Cheers to everyone out there on the internet. Um, I think my influences, I would proudly wear them on my sleeve. You know, things I, that influenced me as a filmmaker, the time period that influenced me as a filmmaker. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I didn't see it as much with my comics. They were, I think they were, because I didn't have the heart in it the same way I have. I think that's the I answer I'm looking yeah. for. Like, I, it doesn't, I don't feel the burning that I feel when I make a movie or when I think of a movie idea. Like that mm-hmm. comes from a, pure like deeper place in me like that feels like a more pure form of expression yeah i I think that there's something that really bothers me about the way people like critique art whether it's somebody else's or their own and like this need incessant need for everything to be original yeah like if you're trying to be different you're gonna be crap like you just have to not think about it and if it's you I always think about like food. Like, there's nothing original about a cheeseburger. Yeah. But if you can make a really fucking good one, then whatever. Yeah, well, you're I, not. Yeah, dude. people are gonna remember that more than they're gonna remember some like weird burger that has like like all kinds <laughs> of weird shit on it, and they're like, that burger was like terrible. You know what I mean? Because if you get too original, yeah. they're gonna call you weird. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Like they're gonna call you weird. So it's just like okay, so I'm either derivative or I'm weird. Right. Yeah. I think that the, some people, the main goal, at least with anything I've done is just to be like, um, just be happy with what I do and be happy yeah. while I'm doing it. And it's I think there's, matters, you know, I'm not like a, an incredibly spiritual person, but I think that there's just like a certain energy that gets baked into your art Yeah, where like, I think people can tell. Like, if you're on stage performing and if you're not into it, people can see that shit. Or if you don't put it all into, you know, like, a, a, an episode of a podcast or something. Like, people can pick up on that energy yeah. and they're not going to... Yeah, it feels they're not gonna, spirited. Yeah, they're not going to dig into it. No, I agree. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, I see what you're saying. I mean, I I can get a little woo, but I won't. But, yeah, I agree, though. I feel like there's a tangible energy if your heart's in it, you know? Both mm-hmm. for you and the... Both the producer of that and the consumer of that can detect, can feel that, you know. Yeah. I believe that. Now, with the movie that you've just made, do you feel like talking about that at all? Do you feel like yeah. promoting it? Yeah. I mean, I guess well, it's let, probably let, a decent let, idea. Let the world know about this ding-dong thing you did. Um, it is called The Boonies. Um, it was shot in Pittsburgh and areas of Somerset and some spots in Millvale even um, where I live now. Um, it was, it, it was interesting. The story of the boonies is funny because I, I have another thing I had made called Theo and the professor. It was a web series that, uh, we kickstarted, raised like 11 grand for and made seven episodes, got them on Amazon prime. It's also on YouTube and it's like a horror comedy show, like in the vein of like, like, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's like Kolchak, the night stalker from the seventies meets like eerie Indiana or something. Like okay. it has this like sort of fun energy. Um, but these two guys that one of them's really old, one of them's sort of young asshole and they like have to investigate a monster of the week thing. And we did that and we put it on Amazon and we were making good money and like good money for us at our level. We were like, wow, it's getting organic. Like, like the algorithms on Amazon prime, people were discovering it. We could see the stats raising. We're like, Oh my God, like this is there. People are organically finding this show. And like, we worked so hard on it for two freaking years. Right. And then, uh, as is apt to happen, the big guys decide to change the algorithm so as to it used to be that everything was equal, right? And you could, um, you could be found just as likely as uh, I don't know if that was on Amazon at the time, but episode of the X Files, somebody watches it, like they might refer like Supernatural and our show in the people who also watched. Not that any of these shows I think were on at the same time, but um, then they changed it, so it became this view structure. And the more views you got, the more likely you were to be recommended so all that really does is recommends all the big big boys and all the yeah. indie people get buried and dude the minute that once you know the minute that algorithm like the day it was going to go into effect our the graph like plummeted like straight line down oh, man after two years of work and so much love and effort and like i really believed in the show i loved the show 
and it really hurt. Like it was a burn, dude, you know? And I was just like, what am I going to do? <laughs> right? Like, damn. And we just sort of, me and Smee and Matt and our other creative partners, we were all just sort of thinking about what the next thing to do was. And Smee discovers on Craigslist, he finds a post from two dudes from Somerset County in Johnstown area or whatever, who you, one of them used to work in the film industry and they want, they're older now, so they want to fund a film from indie f- film people in Pittsburgh. And I reply, it's crazy, right? And I, re- and I reply to the ad, uh-huh. and he meets with me, and they'd met with like 10 other people, and they liked our idea, which they wanted to make a low-budget horror movie. That's what they wanted. Cool. So I pitched this like cannibal redneck horror movie because I haven't seen one in a while, and they liked it. So they were going to fund it, and like these two dudes produced it, and I wrote it uh, with Matt. Me and Matt wrote it. I directed it. I did all the sound design, um, and Smee shot it. And we had like a 35 person crew. It was like the biggest thing I ever worked on in terms of professionalism. Yeah. And like making sure all your T- I's are dotted and T's are crossed and like well produced. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. You know, and then we finished it and it got picked up by Indican in LA and it's got a national VOD release. So it's like, you know, if you pulled up an Xbox or Google Play or anything, like a cable on demand, it's on there. So I mean, people can watch it for five bucks or buy it for 10 or 20. I can't remember. But on any video on-demand platform, it is available. And it gets a physical release on in Best Buy and Walmart on July 27th. Cool. And it's just, like, crazy. <laughs> like, you know? And yeah. I went from feeling, like, it's fun. It's how life can go sometimes. Like, I went from being, like, God damn it, the biggest thing I ever worked on, what I thought would be this web show that I could, like, turn into, like, a show pitch, maybe. You know, and, like, I had this whole dreams for that show just getting stonewalled by corporations and being like, God damn it. To like a year and a half later, like getting a big deal, you know, like perseverance, I guess is key in any creative endeavor. Cause you never know what's around the next corner. It could be a massive disappointment or it could be a huge windfall, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think there's a lot of interesting things to talk about in the realm of like, what is success and how do we define success? And, also, like, what do we define as, like, a failure or, like, yeah. a misstep, right? Um, I think that with myself, you know, I find it really hard sometimes. Again, like you put all this time into something and, like, you're like, why didn't this work? You know, like, I think it's easy to be like, okay, like, in your case, which is probably very, very true, uh, algorithms change and that fucks with a lot of people, right? But I think another problem, too, is that sometimes some people that I know, like, here's a here's a good example. I Somebody that I'm friends with on Facebook was talking about how um, they think it sucks that their band doesn't make any money off of Spotify streams and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, that does suck, right? Like, yeah. that's terrible. But I went on their band Spotify, and they have five monthly listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay. So wait, wait, wait a second here. Like, there's only five people yeah. that are maybe listening to well, your band. You? So yeah, how why are you expecting why are you letting this get to you? And yeah. there's like this other conversation where like sometimes you gotta kind of tell yourself, like, maybe my band isn't good. Maybe the song that I wrote is not good. That's why it's not working. You yeah. know, it's like or maybe it's not necessarily good or bad as subjective, but you're just not connecting with the audience. You know, wrong time, right product, wrong time. Like yeah. there's always like those movies that you know 10 years later it becomes a cult classic right yeah that happens and a lot like, maybe, maybe your tv show will become a cult classic that would be right after I after really uh, that show. <laughs> after uh after the movie does well yeah i mean i would i would love that and that that's what's weird too is that the movie like since we got the we got we got picked up from the people in la and stuff and Lionsgate did the distribution too so like it was big big deal but i have no idea <laughs> how well it's doing or not well it's doing or anything because they don't tell you until the quarter closes and they do all the math and they do all that shit, which is like the first week of August because it came out in April. So I'm just been like hanging out being like, hope it did well. (laughs) Cause like, (laughs) like however it makes will dictate how big of a project I could like move on to or pitch in the future or whatever. Uh So it's very weird. Like like limbo to be like floating in like, whoa what's going on next you know that is weird for sure but yeah i mean at least it got this far that's what i think like yeah at least got this far i mean that's more than a lot of people at my level of this career could say sure like that's i'm I'm happy with it you know 